when there is no friction between you and desired activity, only doubts and fear remain the only barrier. And you all know the trembling hollowness and hyperventilation and sweat that comes when there's something important that you want to do that is high stakes. And this emotional resistance, which can come in form of imposter syndrome, limiting beliefs, and just general fear and anxiety, is common. And I would say everyone has it. Is a product of evolution intended to protect you? But to accomplish extraordinary results, you have to do extraordinary things that go beyond the confined space designated by evolution. So I'm going to present to you four strategies to still move forward and do what you desire. Number one, define, expect, and love the worst possible outcome. Modern psychology recommends a fear-setting exercise to acknowledge your signals and still move forward. First, you write down in your note-taking app in vivid detail what the worst possible outcome looks like, like getting thrown out of the street with everyone ridiculing you. Second, you imagine possible ways to prevent it from occurring. Third, imagine the steps you can take if you find yourself in this position. By making the conditions for failure explicit, it's no longer vague. You will find out that you're much more capable of handling reality than your monkey mind. And the act of writing it down also helps, as cognitive behavior therapy has proven. To go one step further, you can imagine the benefits of the worst case scenario. Know that you will gain nonetheless and be proud no matter what happens. By embracing this loving attitude towards what's coming, you become anti-fragile and unstoppable. Most of all, you can finally relax which is the ultimate key to success in the present. Everything better than the worst possible outcome is a bonus. So that was the first one. And the second is realize that you do not need to believe yourself, just take action. There exists a common fallacy to have the magnified belief before mustering action, which is not true. It's not true. Instead, it is the other way around. Your actions defines your belief. And it's much easier to take unconditional action than changing your belief on the spot. So break down the uncomfortable action into small components and go through either one. This way, you will not be intimidated by it and get into momentum before realizing it. And the key is to make the next step clearly laid out to you at all times. And as long as you keep trying and tinkering, whatever outcome happens will be good. Nothing will make you learn faster than just doing it. And your beliefs will follow suit from the evidence of your actions. Plus, that you can repeat and do it again. So that was the second strategy. The third one is to trust yourself in the present moment. Because to be really honest, the future and past do not exist, only the now. And as long as you're open to current reality, you will figure everything out on the fly. In the mega bestseller, The Power of Now, author Eckhart Tolle argues from multiple angles that no external outcome will give you salvation. But the good news is that you already have what you're looking for inside you in the now. Therefore, always focus on tapping into the present moment. Not only will you feel the best you've ever felt, but it will solve your outward challenges too, since you will see all your current options and adjust. Thus, you do not need to prove anything, since you already are one from the start. So, anticipate the next thought. Just wait for it, and then you will suddenly become present. That's the most powerful way, by the way. Feel your inner body at all times. Integrate your executive and intuitive minds, and you will already feel the paradise that no one can take away from you. 
it is as free and ubiquitous as it can get. And you deserve it. The last strategy is to celebrate the uncomfortable feeling. It is a signal of doing great work. According to Seth Godin, which is best-selling author of 19 books and has done many companies and uh, other amazing stuff in his life, imposter syndrome and other signs of resistance is a sign of doing great work and being on the right path. In The War of Art, which is another very popular book, Stephen Pressfield argues the same, that the pros show up despite how they feel. Therefore, you should celebrate the vulnerable feeling of hollowness, shakiness, and surrender. Be extremely happy when it occurs because you're challenging yourself enough. Think of it as a muscle burn in the gym. Celebrate it. And to make failures, quote unquote, even more motivating, track them each day with an intended outcome of achieving a certain number of failures each day. Successful people like Derek Sivers, Ramit Sethi, and Benny Lewis attribute their success to their pursuit of fears. And I'm going to link an article which I wrote, how you do it in practice, tracking your fears and stuff like that. So in conclusion, to quote the big stoic and boss Seneca, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Therefore, you have two options. Either drop your imagination altogether and just act, or embrace, love the negative aspect, and still move forward. Whatever you choose will enable you to push past emotional resistance as if it did not exist before and become truly unstoppable. So now you remove the physical barriers and you can remove the emotional barriers too. So you can go down the slippery slope towards what you want for in the moment and change direction if you want to. The next video and episode will tie out everything we have learned about the barbell system, which we have talked about for three weeks now, with some frequently asked questions that we'll be updating as we go along in time.